What's up and welcome to our podcast, Toast to Tea. We're two friends that love the world of celebrity and pop culture and talking about it with you. To join our world of celebrity, make sure to rate, like, and subscribe to our podcast. Now hit it. It's about that time. Wait, where's the Chris Cam? To say cheers to our world of celebrity. 1,000%. They're back together and it feels just right. Miss Mika, Mika, nice, nice to meet ya. Ya. Raise your glass. I'm Madison Hill. And I'm Courtney Revolution. Because it's our moment to toast to tea. tea. Courtney, we survived episode one. Here we are, episode two. We've made some technical changes, so I hope everyone is loving the technical changes because Courtney and I are working on it, y'all. Madison, let me say this. (laughs) Okay, so we talk about our old job often. Can Mm -hmm. we just take a moment and just say shout out to our friends Dave and Leo that just set everything up for us back in the day where we could just roll out of bed, walk in, and it's, you know, we're Regis and Kelly. I took it for granted. I took it for granted one million million percent are you kidding me now that we're having to do all the heavy lifting i'm like um i have never missed champong dave and hit at leo more in my entire life because bless them obviously we always made sure they knew how much we appreciated them always, that always. never went unnoticed because that's the kind of people we are we were a family but mm-hmm. i agree man it's like my palms are sweating getting this together it's like the palms the upper lip everything is difficult when you're trying to do the technology end of things but you know what madison we did it. We did it. We We're did here. <laughs> We're going to work it out like Beyonce's song. And I'm ready. Can I get into some, as someone that we used to know would say, our Kiki moment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> PTSD. No, I'm just let's, kidding. Yeah. Let's let's get into our Kiki moment. I had a really great time. I realized that we filmed our first episode right the, the day of the Big Brother finale. Um, and so it's been a week since then. I, I realized I haven't even really told you anything about it. Girl, I had a great but time. Fun? Okay, good. I, had I know a lot you of went fun. to the I think the last time you had just went to the like sing off competition. Yes, it was like the lip sync battle yes, for yes. the Give Kids the World of yes. Village. And then the next yes. night was the finale. So it was, was at uh, Atlanta's Club Heart and and oh my God, I just want to Lance's club, Lance Bass. Yeah, he owns Heart and Rocco's. Lance Bass owns Heart. Yeah, the place where we were shaking our little tushes on the balcony, yeah. and then we yes. met Michelle. Yeah, that's why they always have the Netflix thing. Like, if they oh, can have a Netflix thing there, because you, you know they have a good relationship with Lance. See, um, you gotta educate me about Boys I Town and who's owning the bar. Because I just go to shake my tush. I don't know Na- who's who's paying the bills. Madison, your friend Christian didn't tell you that was Lance Bass's bar. No. Oh, Christian no, or Christian. Mason didn't tell me that. We gonna whack both of them now. We Literally. Gotta give them some oh my gosh! Wow, I would have. I mean, I loved it and appreciated it, but now I appreciate it even more. It is such a fun place. It is, <laughs> it so is a fun place. Can I tell you two okay. things that happened to me? Yes, One of them sorry. was a celebrity that, moment. I, you just like brushed by that, and I was like, I'm so sorry. I need clarification because I'm no, pretty just, sure you just said that that's Lance Bass's bar, and I had no mother effing clue. Okay, Madison, keep going. Back I will the clear it up for you. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. So there I was minding my own business, and a at the time, a stranger had walked up to me and was like, oh my God, are you Courtney? Blah, blah, blah. And I said, yes, of course. You know me, I'm ready for the picture. Yeah. But he had explained that he had known a friend of mine from my Disney college program. So we had hit it off, took a picture, whatever we were kicking. All of a sudden, because it was me, him, and Raven from the circle. Okay. All of a sudden, me and Raven were talking and then I felt like a hand on my arm. You know, I don't like to wear sleeves. And I feel like a hand on my shoulder. And oh it was a familiar voice, but I was like, this can't be. It was like someone like inter- interjecting into our conversation. You know, someone yeah. was just like, yeah, ha, ha. And I turned around and it was Frankie Grande. You are kidding me. <laughs> yeah, we were up at the balcony, the, the rafter area with the reality people at, and people that had bought he, VIP. Well, he was on Big Brother Celebrity, right? He was on Big Brother 16. 16. On the, re- the regular edition. The regular, that. okay. Madison, Frankie he, Grande, I can't say the <laughs> Because he was I, nice. No, I, I'm. Uh, he's lovely. I've, I met. I had to do a uh, RuPaul's Drag Race carpet with my other job Mm -hmm. and he was there. That was a whole other thing. But it was funny because the person I was with asked him about like Ariana and Dalton having problems at the time. So he got real tight lipped and like understandably so uptight. But I cannot take Frankie Grande seriously ever since the meme of people comparing him to Ethan Slater. So like Uh anytime anyone says Frankie Grande, I'm like, remember how Ariana Grande is literally dating somebody who low key looks like her brother. I'm like, I can't, I can't get past it. (laughs) 
I, I could not believe, like, it, me and Raven were just talking, he came, he interjected, he introduced himself, and then he just, it. he, like, went on his merry little way. Love that. My second I love moment, that he loves reality TV as much as he does. Yes. I realized he really is part of the reality TV community, because then no, after, he when lives, we went, he loves we, it. we went back to Tall Dreeks, oh. um, to hang out with the finalists. Nails, hair, hip, big brother. Nails, hair, hip, heel, girl. And I did see Frankie throughout the night, and it was, you know, cute, cute. Did he go back to Tall Dreeks, too? Yeah, girl, Todrick's house was packed. I ain't even gonna lie. It wasn't like no, it wasn't like no, oh girl, we don't want to, girl, everybody was there at Todrick's house. Like my friend Mike, you know Mike? Mike yeah. who knows nothing about Big Brother at all, except he just knows Bowie This is why personally. I love Mike, because Mike and I would be the same. I'll never forget one other guy who I met at a circle rap party who was on Big Brother. He came up to me, he's like, I just wrapped a show. And I was like, okay. He's like, it was Big Brother. I was like, okay, cool. I, you, got, you know me, like I know my reality that I know, but like beyond that, like, I don't know. Madison, I want to ask you something gay to woman yeah have you ever been in a situation in a club or a party where a gentleman is hitting on you and you are looking to your girlfriends for help oh one million percent Has, and they don't get the look and they don't get the look girl can i tell you can i tell my testimony yeah this is and this is not shade this is will be like now we're bonded for life this is one of my favorite new moments now <laughs> so this is the night of the big brother party and, and then we'll, okay. we'll get into whatever girl mind my own business we're downstairs raven had gone to talk to somebody and i had went to talk to somebody i forgot who it was all of a sudden mm -hmm. there was a gentleman a nice. gentleman caller a gentleman girl he was calling ring my bell <laughs> um and you know he was very very polite you know oh hi how you doing uh -huh. oh, it, hi, it always starts know. off that way so you know i'm friendly you know i thought of course he, it's our toxic photograph. Trait. it was the big brother finale. i thought it was i thought he was gonna take a photograph all of a sudden it was like how can i take you home girl let's get up on out of here girl he's coming nice. up to my chin he's coming up to my chin in terms of height i want to reiterate and then I told him, I said, you know, while I'm hanging out with my friends tonight, you know, this, you know, I'm also part of, you know, the reality. Yes. And he's like, no. well, well, where are your friends at? And I look, listeners, I look over and there's my girl, Jack, Jack Atkins from the circle season two. My you know, heart's Jack, pounding. Jack with, Jack with the mannequin. Heart is humongous. So it's like, where are my friends though, actually? Where where are my friends? And, so I, and I find the tallest one. I find the <laughs> tallest one and I'm and I'm and I go, oh, here's my friend, Jack. And I'm and I'm grabbing for him. I'm, I'm like, oh Jack, oh Jack. And Jack comes over and I'm like, and here's my friend Jack. And Jack's like, oh, See, that, that, that like, and, and, and of I'm course, like, like Jack in that moment, it's almost <laughs> like you need to be like, oh, like my friend, like, you know, and Jack's just like, <laughs> Jack, like Jack, he's like, the friendliest guy on the planet. Like when I Very tell you Jack sweet. is so sociable and fun and lovely, but, but in that moment, if he were, situation. if he were a life raft, the girl, I would have drowned. <laughs> I would have drowned, girl. Um, And so I cursed him out after with love. I said, Jack, if you ever see me in a situation with a gentleman like that, you need to come over and stomp them out. Um, really? You're like six five. This man was like three five. You could have given him that work and, and rescued me. So now me and Jack have an understanding. Um, I'm dying. There's nothing more the intense than that look. The intense eyeballs. Girl. Like, luckily, I feel like all of my friends are pretty good and like on it. But the one time where someone left me hanging, Courtney, you were actually, the, you weren't there when it was happening. But was that the circle one of the, Yeah, one of the circle rap parties, I had a similar situation and the only person close to me was Holly's boyfriend. Holly is mine and Courtney's friend. She works on the circle, but it was so funny. I was like staring at him. I was like, Jason. Jason. And Jason and I are really good friends too. Like Jason yeah. is one of my best friends as well. And he was just so enthralled, like bless his heart, so enthralled in the conversation he was having. No idea that I was like death glaring him like SOS help me. And he just, Lordy. he couldn't even, couldn't even know. Finally, I got out of the situation. I was like, Jason, did you not see me giving you the eye? He's like, oh my God, I was just chatting. I'm like, sir. I Girl. love you, but I was giving you the eyes. See, Christian doesn't even wait for the eyes. Christian comes up mid combo and is like, "You good?" And you're like, "Me? Yeah, yeah, Me. I'm good." <laughs> I, like I'm, you do the I'm same not even. Thing. I'm literally you know, not even trying to cock block, but like I just need to. I've seen too many Lifetime movies with my mother to know same. I cannot have any of my girls being tossed down. No, on some stairs. you are the nope. exact same. You guys are the same way. Immediate. I need confirmation, but that's why I love y'all. I won't say names, but can I say this, Madison? Like that. Yes, this, the perfect example of, of of that. Me and Christian being the same. Literally at Todrick's, I won't say who, but I saw one of my friends talking to someone throughout the night, mm -hmm. and I was like, we don't even know who like who is this and then yeah. eventually as the night went on i literally was like you know what i just went right up to them and i was like oh hi and how do you know them like <laughs> oh, I so nice to meet you. And how do you know them <laughs> 
<laughs> What's going on here? Who's this? We don't even. I need confirmation oh. that what is happening here. I, I kind of just her, need though. to know. You know, that's a Taurus in us. We don't like going into unknown situations. We don't like the unknown. We don't like strangers. So it's like if you're acting like you're not a stranger, we need the tea. Call us investigative journalists, if you will. Honestly. Girl, you're lucky. My magnifying glass not on the desk. I shake it for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Okay, okay, let's go ahead, Courtney. Get started. Toast to the tea. Toasty, Bam. what are you drinking? Your Coca-Cola? I have uh, a Coca-Cola because I had a Subway sandwich earlier. Oh my God, I had a chicken Caesar wrap earlier. Oh my God, I live for that. I'm having a little bubbly. Not mm. a, not the fun, my favorite kind of bubbly, a boring kind of bubbly, but it's yeah. fine. Okay, Courtney, let's kick things off talking about Snoop Dogg because some big breaking Snoop Dogg, <laughs> drop it like it's hot news. Snoop Dogg posted on his Instagram that he is giving up weed, which just feels so wrong in my opinion. So he posted a photo of himself with the message, after much consideration and conversation with my family, I've decided to give up smoke. Please respect my privacy at this time. And then the caption he just wrote, I'm giving up smoke. Now, some people think his account was hacked. Some are like, is this a joke? People are unwell, I'm unwell. <laughs> it's his brand. It's his brand. That'd be like me being like, I'm never drinking champagne again. I agree. Yeah, that would be very strange to hear you say something like that. Listen, it's not to say that cannabis is not still part of Snoop Dogg's brand. He's just looking out for his health. True. And still supporting the use of it. He just might not be able to use it currently for health reasons. He said he's giving up smoke, not cannabis oh okay i was like edibles exit girl you can have a, you can girl you can get a little thc and a lemonade girl i was like little explain it to me because you know that this is not my forte <laughs> yes a lot of people that i know that are like they can't smoke or like they don't want it they don't like it the smell whatever they'll they'll just have like some edibles and you I, you know yes. have that thc in their system i do love a i do love a nighttime chew only for <laughs> nighttime. you know i love a chew you don't have a chew in the daytime girl oh if I had a chew in the middle of the day, I would have a panic attack. And what my dad, mean? my dad has fully been like, Madison, you have so much anxiety. Like you need something during the day. The thought of taking even CBD during the day, like gives me anxiety because I'm like, CBD if I'm, ain't nothing. If I'm working, like what if I get tired and then I'm loopy and then, you know, before you know it, I'm saying Scott Disick and Chloe are hooking up and then I'm causing all kinds of ruckuses. I cannot be taking CBD during the day. Madison. Or even one, one day I'm gonna take you to a cannabis event where you're gonna where you're gonna have a cannabis meal and then I actually think I would like that. Yeah. But I, I'd be like, you gotta microdose me. Like you can't hit me with like all the things at once. Yeah, like the full meal will be like 20 milligrams. It'll be like, oh, the little pie is like five, the little sauce 40. is like three, the little twenty. I'll be on the floor. Well, that's the fun. We're going to sling you over our back and go, go ahead, Madison, go sleep. Literally. You're going to have to be like <laughs> rolling me into the Alto on the way home. Like, <laughs> 20? RIP. I take a little five. That's it. And it puts me right to bed. And all my we'll, friends we'll make fun of me because I don't like to call it. I don't like to call it the E word. I like to just say it's my little chew, which you know that about me. You know that's yes. my coffee trait. You, you know this for a while. <laughs> you know, it's fine. We all have our things. Yes, we all, we all do. Things. But I do want to say I support Snoop and his health. And, oh, um, absolutely. I'm glad that he made the announcement and we press on. I wonder how Martha Stewart feels about this. I know. I think it's just something about Snoop Dogg. He's just like the OG, the D-O-double-G. <laughs> but it, of course, obviously for someone's health, it does not matter. Health comes first. Absolutely. It was just, I think, so funny that how everyone reacted being like this is an end of an era this is like, like this worldwide is news right thing. now Madison. yes everyone's panicking and I, I mean me included help over anything else and as i've learned smoke does not mean he's given up the thc so he's exactly gonna he's gonna be fine it's gonna be okay all will be well let's move on and talk about kiki palmer because obviously Madison. kiki palmer has been in the news a ton this week we're gonna cover all of the things so for those of you who do not know kiki palmer was actually granted a temporary restraining order and temporary primary custody of her child she has this temporary restraining order against the father of her child darius jackson i mean the security cam photos of him seemingly assaulting 
assaulting her, trespassing onto her home, threatening her, destroying her. I mean, the photos are horrible. Really, really bad. I don't know, Courtney, if you know, he he obviously has denied all of these allegations. And he tried to say that he was trying to get the phone from her. And that's the altercation that was witnessed. And either way, you never put your hands on a woman like that. So I don't even care what the reasoning is. But audio surfaced of a phone call between Kiki Palmer, her mom and Darius, we can hear obviously that Kiki's mom is very upset because she's audibly hearing the altercation go down between Darius and Kiki, which for a mom, that has to be one of the scariest phone calls that you can receive. Mm -hmm. Um, And in her trying to kind of intervene in the situation, she screamed out that Usher is gay. This is not funny. And this is the the big takeaway. <laughs> like ninety percent of the message. Ninety percent. I'm like, I'm like, the big story is the fact that Darius Jackson is <sighs> acting so inappropriate with Kiki Palmer. But I like, of course, the internet's like, wait, did Kiki Palmer's mom say Usher's gay? She did say that, but she took to Instagram to clear up that little comment. She said, "Quote: The lie I told about Usher was to get Darius to stop abusing my daughter on account of his jealousy." She actually wrote this in the comments of uh, the Neighborhood Talks Instagram page, and she said, "So I said he didn't like women." for her safety. Everything else I meant with my chest and didn't expect anyone to hear it because recording me is illegal. She also made a comment about wanting to put a bullet in his brain, which was like, but again, you're on the this phone. Is like, this is like her daughter, daughter first of all. This yeah, your so, daughter's yeah, getting I mean, abused. They, you know, your grand, your grandchild is in the midst of all of this. I, I believe the reports were saying at some point or another that some of this abuse was happening in front of the child, and so. And that's what I'm saying. Though, so, like that. I you hate can't... that she. I hate that she weaponized homosexuality in that way. Oh, yeah. But I hate it, but I Especially understand the, the situation. Usher, you know, you know, I love Girl, Usher. And, and you know, Madison, I was going to make a video that said uh, a TikTok that said, "Yes, I'm sure Usher is probably like." oh my god with all of this happening but also i'm so relieved a little bit that usher had serenaded kiki in the first place because we had no clue that any of this was happening for those of you guys that don't know all of this stuff with kiki and the and the baby's father happened because kiki was wearing a revealing outfit to an usher show and yeah, usher serenaded kinda, her like he does every night like that's when we've kind of i think first got the whiff. wind of Darius's controlling behavior because yes, he tried ma'am. to shame her on Twitter and her mm-hmm. outfit was not even revealing. She looks good. She looks good. <laughs> That's what kills me the most. If you're going to go off about a fit, really interesting. That was red flags right then and there. And then obviously hearing all of this, even bigger red flags. And I agree, obviously Kiki Palmer's mom should have not but clearly she knows that that was not the right thing to do and in that situation i feel like i can't really hold it against her because she was scared for her daughter's life and the life of her grandchild the things coming out of her mouth i'm sure were not rationally thought through madison do you You care usher's gay no i don't care case closed girl who cares if usher's gay the usher look good who cares i also i just feel like it's 2023 are we still caring if people are gay girl who cares? I Let think Usher do his thing on them roller skates and serenade your mama, your daddy, your uncle, and everybody else. Who cares? And that, that, that goes into a bigger conversation. You know, that's like, mm. I can't even believe that we people get mad about that anymore. But He's gay. Usher's gay. He's that's gay. that's Usher's the world gay. we live in. I'm like, so what? He can still piece up A-Town down. What does that matter? Girl, don't let, yeah, come up. Madison, don't get me started. You know, you know. <laughs> he's, I, the, he's doing the Super Bowl. Like, I who cares love, if he's gay? I love Usher. I am obsessed with him. You know, I saw him one time at the Louis Vuitton store in Las Vegas with my own two little pupils. <laughs> and he was in there. This is years ago with my family. And he walked in and he was all scruffy. Like he was Ooh. super low key. And mm-hmm. my mom was looking at a bag and he was right next to her and like oh, made a comment gag? about the bag. And she was like, oh my God. And Shane, my sister and I were like, oh my God. That's Usher. That's Usher. And then all of a sudden we looked at the doors of the store and it was waves of people coming in and they literally whisked him away to this back room and then it was it. So we were the only ones who got to see him. No one else got to see him. Not this VIP Usher experience. It was crazy. It all happened Whoa. so fast. And this was years ago, but I will never forget that. I will never forget seeing Usher in the Louis Vuitton store at Caesars Palace. <laughs> Usher, if you're listening and you remember, a family of four that were all vertically challenged, that was me. <laughs> Not vertically. You were 
are silly, Madison. You know my family. We're tiny humans. <laughs> <laughs> We're memorable. <laughs> tiny but feisty and intelligent. Tiny but feisty. Exactly. Tiny and mighty. But no. I I freaking love Usher. I can't wait for the Super Bowl. I feel like it's going to be iconic. I think the Super Bowl is going to be iconic, too. You know, there are people that feel as though Usher is not deserving of the Super Bowl stage. And if we really are honest with ourselves, we know that's a ball-headed lie. Um, Usher has, like, decades of hits that he could just thumb through. I want him on roller skates, ice skates. I want him to do a pink roll up in a curtain, drip water. I want him to do the worm, like like uh, Sporty Spice. Like, I want him to give us everything tonight. <laughs> like, I also everything. feel like he performs. He dances. He has choreography. He is going to be doing the most. And you know what? I feel like people always have a problem with the Super Bowl performer. There's never been one announcement where everyone's collectively like, yeah, we're all here for it. Every time, whoever it is, someone always has an issue with it. I agree. And I mean, I feel like if you found a problem with like Shakira, like you just miserable because everybody loves Shakira. So like... Come on now. It's like that people hate if it's a rock band. People hate if it's a pop star. People hate if it's rappers. It's like cheese and rice. We're running you can't, out of You genres. can't please everybody, you know, but. You want some I think we can, up there? Like cheese and rice. We can all agree okay. at least that Usher's talented. Yeah. Like, you know. Like Taylor Swift. Even if you don't mm -hmm. like Usher, like you can't deny that he has hits on hits on hits on hits on hits. I agree. I agree. Well, I And hope back to Kiki Palmer. I, I really wish the best for her because I can't imagine going through something like this and then also having it play out in the public eye. Damn. Girl, yeah, it's I mean, it. absolutely. And I know for a fact that it is affecting her business because that trickles down and it affects my business. So we need mm -hmm. her to um get it together. Come up, come come up out of here. Come up out of yeah. this drama. I think um, I think she will. I think she yeah, will. I think she I, will now too. now that like the court system is involved, mm -hmm. and thankfully the court system is actually working quickly. And the child is safe. That's the most important the thing. T, absolutely. So I feel mm -hmm. like everything is on her side. I just hope it stays that way. I think it will. She yeah. gotta she gotta take control of this narrative again. Mm -hmm. And and in a good way, because we thought that, oh, everything is fine, everything's copacetic, but they pop back up on live together. And girl, you need to get rid of him. Okay. I mean, I would have got rid of him after he tried to shame me on Twitter for wearing a normal outfit. Same. But I think when there's a child involved, you really want to make that work. Yes, and I think people underestimate how much that weighs on people but especially on women yes. i feel like there's this additional pressure of suck it up do it for your child you need a two-parent household there is that additional pressure i feel like that we put on ourselves and so i know that her red flags were going off but you know in her mind she's like this is the father of my child i need to make it work and now obviously things have gone way too far and she's put a stop to it so she's so freaking strong truthfully i want good the next piece of Kiki Palmer news I want to hear is like good news. That's what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. I want to hear like some awesome sick movie that she's working on. Yeah. A big new project. Just anything I'm sure to bury this down the Google search because I'm sure that she's like over it. And I'm sure her mom is too. Her mom's yeah. not trying to be in the press. You know what I mean? Like she said, she didn't know she was going to be recording and everyone was no, talking to her like No, like, and let me, I'll be honest with you. If my mom heard a phone call of a man treating me the way Darius was allegedly treating Kiki Palmer in those photos, <sighs> Mama Hill would have said about 5,000 times worse a thing. I, so yeah, you might yeah. not have brought Usher into it because, you know, we cannot slander the man who we shopped with at Louis Vuitton for seven minutes. But she would have said, ju like, ju I can't blame I can't blame Kiki Palmer's mom for saying what she said. I can't. Let's just say poor, poor Usher and call it a day. Mind his business. Kiki. Poor Usher and for Kiki. Okay, let's move on and talk about Ariana Grande. Yes. Since we were talking about Frankie Grande earlier, it only feels right. So <laughs> apparently things with Ariana and Ethan are just going freaking fantastic. They have now allegedly met each other's families, y'all. So according to a source who spoke to Us Magazine, Ariana thinks it's important for whoever she's dating to meet her family. Makes sense. And her and Ethan are both family driven, which is great because he does have a child. Ariana's inner circle has allegedly given Ethan the stamp of approval and thinks he's a perfect match for her. This is again, according to the Us Magazine source. Ariana's family thinks that Ethan is balanced, motivated, professional, extremely respectful of her boundaries and her profession. And the source went on to 
say that they, quote, have a lot in common, especially their theatrical side, which is only added to their off oh my gosh, off camera chemistry and connection. Is this the end game for Ariana Grande? Hell to the no. Hell no. Hell this no. This is not, this is not the one? Me. No. Oh what my. What do you mean? Oh my lord. No. No, no, no. Well, they he understand looks, each other's theatrical like side. No. He looks like her brother. Absolutely freaking not. No. I do love that they've bonded over theater because obviously, actually theater. My friends make fun of me how I say theater, so I'm really trying to work on it. Theater. There we go. I love that they've bonded over theater because obviously, like, I'm a musical girly. Love myself some Wicked. You know, I I'm living for it. I love Broadway. I think that's fantastic. But I just think Ariana, she is bouncing around trying to figure it out. And yeah. I think she's got to bounce around a couple more times. because I just don't think Ethan's it. You think that he's her end game? No, I'm, I'm just curious to hear what you think. I'm not really sure what that is. Okay. I, I, I'm I, like, I, no I, I think about like, what do you, how do you introduce this man to your family? Once the news is out that, you know, y'all both left y'all spouses to be and the baby to be each other you know how does how do you say well mom and here's ethan he's Especially here for dinner because we know well we don't know they claim there was no overlap but like Oop. a little overlap maybe maybe I, I think i think there is a smidgen a little a little t a teaspoon of overlap potentially allegedly but i'm just saying to your point then how do you say hey mom mama grande this is the one. SpongeBob. And also, I feel like Ethan almost has it worked. Ethan was married to his high school sweetheart. Mm. New baby leaves that for Ariana Grande. Imagine having introduced Ariana to the fam after that. It's like anyway, here's Ari. Right now I'm in a state of mind. <laughs> like I got that's no. that's painfully awkward. I couldn't imagine being in that situation, but you have to think they have to love each other to some amount to be going through all of that because that's a lot of trouble i think for nothing you don't if, think if, there's like, like some level where the wicked pr team is like well cat's out of the oh, bag you two mm. so y'all are at least sticking together through this press tour yeah i think that i, I yeah. think, that Do you they think they'll like break up other? before her next album oh before her next album because that'll be after wicked right realistically realistically i don't know i guess i don't want to ever wish anyone to break up i want to make that clear i never wish that because i don't want bad not. juju you know i don't want bad juju relationship juju or bad juju in general but i just feel like it was a relationship of circumstance they were both in the uk they were filming i do think that they like each other i do think that they connect on levels that she's never been able to connect with any other man i don't imagine pete davidson was like yeah babe let's go to broadway and talk about the range and talk about you know like no. pete davidson's not doing giving her that so i'm sure on some level it is different it is great but i don't know i just feel like uh, it's gonna gonna fizzle it's gonna fizzle she's seen the memes she's seen the not memes she's seen the memes. she's seen the memes you can't you can't do that forever once you see that it's going to be your life i that am it. i can't <laughs> she's seen the memes <laughs> she's seen the memes okay Ariana, it's only a matter of time. i i definitely agree with the thought of them being together throughout this press tour you know for wicked but it's like all of this for what all of this for what it just seems like y'all are not gonna be together forever don't meet my mama i know not with her I mean, good fur coat i met her before she had the good fur coat on girl no -uh. <laughs> mm -mm. we do love a good fur coat i don't know i it's messy and I think it's it's, it's very messy here. it sucks when you're a celebrity and like all your business is out there because like she could just be a regular girl with like going through all this but now she's a celebrity and we all got to know and talk about it on the internet i i'm happy for her i'm glad it's working out because we've heard a lot of reports about her friends not being super here for it mm -hmm. and so i'm glad that it sounds like everyone's kind of coming around to the idea of them being a positive thing allegedly um, <laughs> allegedly just for ari's sake you know what i mean because like oh man going through all that and then your family also hating him that would really suck so i'm happy that allegedly things are improving but i just think we got to keep an eye on it courtney like i, ari I agree. and Ethan, we got to keep an eye on there's tea a brewing and it's gonna burst Sorry, notice how ethan's uh ethan's ex-wife she shut up real quick all of a sudden he so said i wonder, wonder if she got some money if you want that check you got to sign the nda okay <laughs> Because she just got real <laughs> silent. And honestly, I would, if I were her, I'd be like, that's fine. But then yeah. you're going to be oh, giving yeah. me some spousal support like Sutton from Real Houses of Beverly Hills. Oop. To the tune of $30,000 a month. That is After so taxes. Money. After taxes. What Could a soleil. No. Well, one day, yes. We will, one day, Courtney, we will be making $30,000 a month for not doing Oof. anything. 
and it's going to be freaking fantastic, but Oof. we won't have to get divorced to get it. So it'll be fine. We're going to get there. Yeah, we're, we're going to get, get there. there. Mm -hmm. We're going to get there. Okay, let's move on and talk about a topic that, oh, I know just gets us both riled up. So Tristan Thompson is on a redemption tour, y'all. I don't know what kind of deal Tristan Thompson struck up with Kris Jenner, but there mm. was a deal made and he signed on the dotted line and she is fighting for her life trying to give this man a redemption arc. So on the most recent episode of the Kardashians, we see Tristan go on an apology tour, basically. First up, we see a conversation with him and for him and Chloe. I watched this on the treadmill today, so it's super fresh. <laughs> we see a conversation with him and Chloe where he's like, I've had a private talk with Kim. I've had a private talk with Chris. But now he wants a public talk with Kylie and Courtney. Okay, so first we see him sit down with Kylie. And he acknowledges that, you know, she was likely the most affected by his actions with Jordan Woods. Mm -hmm. um, he told her how they've always had a good relationship until this, and he apologizes that she lost a best friend, which the part that bothered me is he goes, and you know, if you could just tell Jordan I apologize for any trouble I caused her. Why he I'm can't like, call Jordan? When you have ruined the girl's life. Yeah. Why he can't call Jordan? I don't understand. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that either. I'm like, that's not an apology you just pass on. Like, hey, remember how I ruined your life? Like, so sorry. Like, no. If I were Kylie, I would have been like, Okay, you can call Jordan and tell her that you are sorry. Like, Tristan is so dumb. What is what is so hard about him calling Jordan and saying, hey, listen, I'm I know sorry. I put you in a trick bag, but uh, it's been a few years, so I hope you're over it. Hope you're And well. you know what's annoying? He, so, he said that twice. So he said it to Kylie, and then he said it again in his confessional. He's like, you know, I feel better after having this conversation. I hope Kylie passes on my apology to Jordan. I'm like, in his conversation with Chloe, he kept saying, as the older person, I should have done better and i'm like older older means nothing being older doesn't make you a better person yeah no you tried no. to say it was fake news he's allegedly been in therapy for two years so we'll give him tristan that. yeah that's what he told courtney i'm not so sure i believe that but i e for effort e yeah. for effort i mean mm. kylie kylie drank the kool-aid i'm not even gonna lie to you kylie was getting teary-eyed because tristan went on to this thing about how he wants to make people proud and he wants true to be proud and true idolizes him he doesn't want true to be at school talking about how much she loves her daddy and then some kid come up and be like well your dad did this and this and this your pop was trash and we all know it exactly and kylie like is like oh my god that makes you want to cry i think you're a good per like i think you have good energy i just you know and she's like i just think chloe deserves the world and tristan's like i think that too so kylie and tristan have a kumbaya they make up then tristan goes to talk to courtney and this is why i stan miss courtney kardashian <laughs> this girl comes into the talk with a notebook Ooh. a notebook of points and I live for that because you don't go into an argument without your points. You've always you said that, Madison. You You've don't. Always you always go in with me. You know, because I had to go into some arguments back in the day. And I always had my receipts <laughs> mm -hmm. and my points. You always <laughs> go into a fight with those two things. Or Shout out to Mama Hill. She taught me those. And so Courtney will not let her foot up off his neck. She said, I'm not angry at you. I'm just trying to understand you. I want to understand how you're able to do what you do. Basically, why are you the way that you are? Yeah. She asks him about, I know, I was like, damn. She asks him why he cheats. Like, does he get his kicks off like the next day? Like, how does he feel the next day? And he says that he feels disgusted with himself the day after he cheats. And then it cuts. So we're going to see the rest of Courtney and Tristan's conversation next week. But Courtney is not, he's trying to give Courtney the same kind of little finesse that he gave Kylie. And Courtney's like, uh huh. Okay. So, but you continually cheat though. But you've yeah, done it I more mean, than once. Like you've if, messed if, up more than once. If Courtney's going to ask the real questions, then I mean, Tristan should be prepared to have real answers, right? Because I mean, these are questions that we've all been asking for years like why do you serial cheat when you have a baby with somebody else it's game over like where's the sense of where was the sense of maturity and you know he said multiple times too which i thought was interesting he kept saying i want my family to respect me i want my family to trust me i'm trying to earn that back day by day so he clearly considers the kardashians his family and i think that that's a lovely sentiment i do feel bad for him losing his mother taking over the care of his younger brother you know i think it's great that he's leaning on the kardashians but you know i really struggle with 
fully empathizing with this man when the other mothers of his children are saying hasn't gave two f's about his other kids i love mm -hmm. that he takes the kardashian kids to school that's awesome he's so close with kim's kids doesn't even know where his son goes to school allegedly that's what jordan craig's sister claims. that's embarrassing if that's true that's embarrassing so that's, that's why true. i'm like okay i can tell though courtney they are trying to give this man the redemption arc i don't but, know but what's what... the benefit of that do you i think, I, I, I i don't what no? good do they get out of the audience feeling some positive feelings about Tristan? And Ew. it's killing me because I'll be honest, I don't think Chloe wants him back. This is the first time in this entire mm. saga I think Chloe is numb to Tristan. Oof. Like I re like she really and he is just fighting for his life trying to get her back. Truthfully, honestly, after watching with my own two eyes, not just clips, a full episode in its entirety, she does not, as of right now, as of what is being aired want anything to do with that man. Sometimes you just get to a point where you really have to let them know, hey, too little, too late, Miss Jojo, okay? And Tristan has played around with Chloe for years and years and years. And at what point is Chloe, like, is she supposed to just constantly be a doormat? I'm glad. I'm I glad. agree. I agree. And you know what? I love that she's like, my family, have the conversation. If they want to talk to you, cool. If they don't, they don't. Like, sorry. And I feel like that's fair. I don't know why Mama Chris is giving him so many passes. I don't really understand What do either. you think that is? Do you, you think that she sees like a strategy with like keeping you him have close the to the cam. family? You I have feel the like cam. if anything, keeping him close is better than having him far away because who knows what Tristan has seen. And the last thing that we need is for Tristan to put out a book because sure, we can say well, why would we believe Lamar? Because he was on drugs and prostitutes, blah, blah, blah. But Tristan is in his right state of mind. So we will be more inclined to believe Tristan if he puts out a tell-all versus Lamar. Courtney, I swear it is like you were hacked into mine and Monica's <laughs> conversation this morning. I literally <laughs> was saying, you know, Lamar messed up, right? Lamar was not perfect. He cheated too. But Lamar cheated because he was hanging around the wrong people and he was on drugs and he was in bad circumstances. Mm -hmm. Tristan suck these women out or sought, sought, suck. Not he sucked these women out, not, not he this. He sucked these women out. He sucked those women out. You know what I mean? He went to the club of his own willingness and motorboated that girl when Chloe was nine months pregnant. He took Jordan Woods home. He let her legs be draped. Mm -hmm. He started a relationship with Marley Nichols and then obviously had a baby with her and then was messaging her on Snapchat. Lamar Odom has his flaws. Don't get me wrong, but he was not in the right state of mind when he was doing a lot of the things he was doing. What is Tristan's excuse? He was Stupid. immature. He was immature. That's his excuse. He's, he was immature and he needed to lose every, which I do think sometimes you need to lose everything to realize what you had. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying he can't change. I do think he can change. True. But I need to see more. I agree. Because I, I mean, after cheating on Chloe so many times, how about this? I would love, I think I would be able to feel differently about Tristan if I saw him take care of all of his children full stop. You can't like pick and choose which child you want to take care of. That's not being a good parent, no matter which way you cut it. It's different if they're not allowing him to see the children, but I don't think that they would be, you know, putting their little social media statements or whatever out if like they were keeping the children from him. It's obvious that they would like their children to see that, you know, their father, and that is not happening for some reason, you know? So, mm -hmm. mm, exactly. Tristan, I, I ain't see. buying it. I'm not buying it either even though I did give them a view, but I felt like I needed to give them a view to be able to recount it. So that way everyone else doesn't have to give them a view. But that's why I did do it on the treadmill because I was like, if I'm going to give them a viewership, I've, I got to multitask. I can't just burn sit some calories. for 55 minutes. I got to burn some calories at the same time, okay? And then eat them all back with my chicken Caesar wrap, but it's fine. Okay, let's move on and talk about Selena Gomez and Gigi Hadid because and Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. We're going to talk about all four because, Courtney, I need to know, as a fellow Swifty, mm -hmm. how are you feeling? Feeling almost one week after all of the content that Taylor and Travis gave us in Argentina. I'm just Taylor's now. I'm just now recovering. Come as the Chiefs. Come straight home to me. You know I lost my ever loving. She said, I'm down bad, y'all. She is down bad. She's, She's down, down so bad. bad. I said, ooh, Taylor, I seen this song before i've heard this song before i've lived this song before and now i'm watching it play out with you 
I love it. If Taylor is happy, I love it. Her parents seem to be like, okay, Travis is all right. The dad hanging out with Travis. The dad of that seems nature. like he really likes it. He's, He's like, like, yeah. I, You've got I mean, testosterone in you. Yeah. And, and Taylor's dad used to play football in high school. Oh, I didn't know that. And call, oh, I learned that on oh. Travis Kelsey's podcast this week. Oh. And they talked about the dad, Mr. Swift talked about his football days with Travis. So it's game over. Madison, did you see that the Swifties are digging up Travis's old tweets? Yes. And I'm dying because they're just straight up embarrassing. I love that Taylor is like dating someone that is like just a percentage of dumb. Like, literally, can't spell I'm the world obs- squirrel or peace. <laughs> He could not spell peace at all. There were like six different tweets I saw that were like, oh my, he, all, in 2011, Travis Kelsey had rocks for brains and I would have been his friend. I would um, have I'd too. still be his friend today. Like um, Travis I, Kelsey I like would have together. been in my friend group in high school. Like one yeah. percent. Yeah. I, I like him. I think that he has good vibes. I, I, I think most of all, I enjoy the fact that it appears as though Taylor is just doing what she wants to do in this relationship. I don't like seeing her like run and dash and duck into all these cars and constantly be, you know, hiding from everyone like she was with Joe. She seems a lot happier this time around. And I think that that's a good thing. She seems more carefree, which I think I've never seen this side of her in a relationship because she is always ducking and dodging. Mm -hmm. And so it is so refreshing. And and truthfully, I don't know how many of the clips you've seen. I was stalking all the mother effing clips. But the way he looked at her when she was giving her final bow was just like so much pride. If your man, your partner does not look at you the way Travis Kelsey is looking at Taylor Swift when she is taking her final bow, go get someone new. Like It seems like he has a lot of respect for her. So you know? much respect. For her and, and her I career. Love, yes. Courtney, and also his brother, Jason Kelsey, is one of the messiest men on the planet. Oh, and I, I love live that. for it. Because he always tries to get Travis to spill the tea on their podcast. And then he also worked la- the word labyrinth into the conversation on the podcast and was like, I bet it's a labyrinth of issues whenever you have to postpone a show for weather. Oh, and and Travis is like, labyrinth. Nice. And then he just like keeps going because she's saying labyrinth, which is all about mm-hmm. falling in love again. Falling in love <laughs> again. Sorry, I just had to say that one more time for the people in the back. Anyway, I'm living for it. I'm happy that you were living for it too. I was And now for it. we have confirmation that Selena Gomez and Gigi Hadid are living for it too, which thank the Lord because there was a report from Us Magazine about Gigi Hadid being concerned that Taylor Swift was doing too much too soon with Travis. That was coupled with a report from page six about Selena Gomez being concerned that Taylor was moving too fast. I did see that. Yes. First this week, Gigi Hadid clapped back herself on Instagram. She responded to Perez Hilton's post about the (sighs) Us Magazine report. Oh man, Perez. Perez, Perez, you you always think that Perez Hilton is out of the game, still in the game. I thought he was out of the game. I thought he was a father. Oh, a father and still in the game. So she commented on his Instagram post and said, I'm a couple days late to this tag, but didn't the press try this last week with Selena? Let it be. We are all over the moon for our girl, period. And then a couple hours later, a report came out from Entertainment Tonight where a source said that, quote, Selena and Gigi both love Taylor and Travis together. Selena and Gigi are in a good spot and have put any past drama behind them. They've both moved on. Selena thinks this relationship is the real deal for Taylor. She's a big supporter of her and Travis. Selena and Gigi see how respectful Travis is of Taylor and that he treats her like a queen. They are both Mm. happy for them. Treats her like a queen. Treats her like a queen. That gave me the chills. I love that. (laughs) Come on, Mm -hmm. Travis knows he's building the music industry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I also just like, he's secure. He loves her. Further down in that report, they talked about how he's like a good listener, a good communicator. Mm. He's respectful. He like respects her passion. I'm like, okay, we get it. He's, he is. He's about it. The one, okay? He's the end game. Then I also just last thing I'm going to say, there's a chance, and if it happens, obviously we'll talk about it on next week's episode, but there is mm-hmm. a chance that we are going to witness with our own two eyes, the Swifts and the Kelseys meet. The families <sighs> combine and come together. Multiple reports have claimed that they are going to meet on Monday at the Kansas City Chiefs Philadelphia Eagles game for Monday Night Football, which would be very special because Jason, his brother, plays for the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Taylor is from Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's a mess. Like, I grew all... up with those uh, Philadelphia Eagle uh, jerseys all around me in elementary school growing up. No, Courtney, you can attest because Holly and Jason, who I talked about earlier on this podcast, they're also mm-hmm. from Pennsylvania. 
And they did tell me, being that Taylor is from PA, if she does not wear some sort of neutral colors or like half Eagles, half Chiefs, yeah. PA will disown her. Yeah. If yeah, the P PA loves people. their Eagles, girl. Believe me, mm -hmm. I I didn't get I like didn't get it as a kid. Like, and then I asked my dad for a pink Eagles jersey. He was like, <laughs> "Here I am, like, ten. Yeah, like, can I have an Eagles jersey? But like this one. Like, and he was like, <laughs> I'll, do the, I'll do the Eagles, but I need a pink. I need a pink. Yeah, like I, I'm I showing up, girl, to the to the Christmas party. Yeah, but like, girl, exactly. You were participating. Pink. You were participating. We just like we have taste. Yeah, and yeah. What do we do? Pink goes better than no shade to the Philadelphia Eagles, but the green is not all of us can pull off the emerald green. You know what I mean? It's, it's a very it's, specific it's, it's, color. It's very specific. Red, red <laughs> is hard too. Red is hard too. Yeah, I'm just like blessed Christmas. that red goes with blonde, but like red is hard. Red is hard. Red is hard. I don't know. I I don't. I hope she goes with neutral colors because I don't want PA to disown her. There's so I much pressure that. on this situation. You know that every single camera is going to be I following know. Taylor's family, following Travis's family. I hope that they actually get a moment to like meet where it's not like it doesn't feel like they're in or like under a microscope. Yeah, you know, it's going to feel it's like that moment. for sure. I know, but just the fact it's happening whenever. Ever, ever, ever in Taylor Swift relationship history, have we witnessed her parents meet a boyfriend's parents? Never. This is a relationship. Or even heard about it's, it. It's so different. Like, I don't think I ever, because I remember, you know, I got a memory. I got a file up in here. I don't remember any reports about the Alwyns and the Swifts meeting, no. hitting it off, getting along. And they I don't even remember for, they any. They were together for years, like six years. Six. Yeah. I don't even remember reports of like, Joe's mom loves Taylor. I literally don't even know. Maybe she that. didn't. Like, Maybe she didn't. And yet we see Donna, Donna and Taylor eating chicken tenders in the suite. You know see, what I, mean? I love that. Like, like show, like show us the real Taylor girl. Like Taylor love a chicken like, finger. I love that. Doing. I love, and I hope, you know, I hope Selena gets her moment like this too. She because will. I feel like, I, I hope so. I don't know. I feel like people give her so much flack. But I hope she gets her moment because I am living for Taylor. Give zero Fs and just be like, here's my man. Here's me. What about it? I'm living and for I, it. And I like that attitude. It's very fearless. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why we get along because we will use the Taylor Swift it's reference cute. any way we can. I um, like absolutely together. ship them. I know. So fingers crossed we get to witness it. I will be tuning in and I'm so excited. I cannot wait. Okay, Courtney, should we do our um, ending segment? Yes. It's time to put it put in, in the, the teapot. teapot. Woo! Also Woo! remember, if there is something that you guys want to put in the teapot, go ahead and email us at toast to teapod at gmail.com. Tell us what you want to put in the teapot. It can be celebrity related, personal, whatever you want to put in the teapot, aka release into the universe, be done with whatever you want, and we will read it during our next episode. So don't forget to send us an email. Mm -hmm. Should I go first? Yes, you go first. This is what I'm going to put in the teapot. You Let me know when your timer 60 is 60 seconds, ready. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. What? There's something to be said about people that are able to be direct. And I feel like in 2023, directness is really looked at as something that is negative. Now, me personally, I'm a very shy person. I don't do as well in group settings. But when I'm one on one with a person, it's very easy for me to be blunt, to be direct, to be honest, to be transparent. And through friendships throughout the years, I've found that people are afraid to be themselves. And through not being able to just show their true self, they're unable to be direct. And when you are someone that is comfortable in yourself and you're confident in yourself and what you bring to the table and you're able to be direct, sometimes that can be off-putting. And I just wanna encourage everyone to just be yourself. Like who you are really is enough. You don't have to fake to be part of a group. You don't have to fake to be a bigger entity than what you really are. It's awesome to just wake up and say, this is who I am. This is what I bring to the table. Either you like me or you don't. Because and it's okay because I like me at the end of the day. Um, and that's where I'm at. Yeah, good? good job. Oh. Yeah, Thanks, you went Madison. over a little bit. Yeah, oh, yeah. Good. I have to get that off my chest and my breasts. I love that. Do you feel better? Do you feel better? <laughs> I do. Yeah, okay. I had to. I had to put it in there, girl. Mm. So you have to. You. Mm -hmm. That's what it's here for. Oh wait, I have to set my timer. Set. I'm just sitting. It's here, here to really sit. 
I was dying yeah. when you said direct because I was uh, I just caught up on the new season of Real Housewives of New York, and that's like a t a term that they all love to use. They're like really? we're just direct. Yeah, they are all direct, honestly, in their defense. But some of them a little more than others. But yeah, Ooh. I love okay, it. Okay, are you ready, girl? Okay, yes. In five, four, three. Two. Okay, the thing that I want to put in the teapot this week is the media constantly pitting women against other women. And I'm talking about these BS reports about Selena Gomez and Gigi Hadid being against Taylor Swift. I just feel like it is so 90s. The fact that we are trying to say this woman's friends are not happy to see her in a happy, healthy, glowing relationship. It's almost giving up the vibes like they're jealous, they're competing, they don't want to see their friend win. And in what world would two friends not want to see their best friend doing well and thriving? And I just think this is such an old freaking narrative. I don't know why the media continues to do it. It is 2023. Women, well, some might like to compete with each other. I'm not going to lie. There are people who like to compete. The women who know and are secure and got it going on, they're good with themselves. They're not trying to compete. You think Selena Gomez is trying to compete with Taylor Swift? Get real. You think Gigi Hadid is trying to compete with Taylor Swift? No, she's dating Bradley Cooper. Like, let's just put this narrative to bed. And women are uplifting women in 2023 and 2024 and beyond. Okay, thanks. <laughs> A minute and four seconds. Yes, wow, we, Madison. Course. You know why? Because we can never shut up. Like, I think it's so funny that we think we can ever talk anything in a minute. Like, we love to talk. <laughs> that was good, Madison. Stop pitting the women's against each other. Stop Harmony pitting the women's against all. each other. I'm Damn gonna, it. I'm going to come for you. All right, you guys. That is a wrap on our second episode of Toast to Tea. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure if you're watching this that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And if you're listening, make sure you also subscribe and follow along wherever you watch and listen to your podcast, rate, review, all of the things to help push this podcast to the top of the feeds. Make sure you're also following us on social media at Toasted Tea Pod on Instagram and TikTok. You can also follow me at I am Madison Hill, two Ds. I am Court Revolution on TikTok and Courtney Revolution on Instagram. Make sure you're following us. Make sure you subscribe to our channels, all of that good stuff. And y'all, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.